we have a very standard algorithm when we approach our adults with ascites based so on what we see clinically we have 1 2 3 4 and we carry out the tap and further investigations and manage Uh, let us have Dr. Gupta's view in how he would do it differently for children. When he will poke the needle, what investigations he would send, and what he would suspect when he sees certain parameters coming back. Dr. Gupta, please. Thank you very much uh, for your introduction, and it's lovely to be here in Bombay uh, in a nice wet, rainy weather. Feels like I'm in UK, so it's nice to be here with friends, families uh, whom I know and uh, you know whom I've grown up with as well. Uh, I think uh, you know, Dr. Bhalla did introduce me correctly that you know I have lot to learn from adults because in the scientific sphere we have lot to learn from the adults and we in the teachings of a scientist we've learned most of the teachings from our adult colleagues. But you know the first question always to ask whenever there is a scientist is is it a scientist? What is the pathophysiology? What are the causes of a scientist in children? What is the use of using serum albumin and ascitic gradient in a scientist? then i'll talk about some few conditions and then talk about refractory ascites which is more seen in the adult situation than in the pediatric situation but can be seen in the pediatric situation and can be extremely tricky to manage so is it ascites we first think about uh, you know fat because you know obesity is a growing problem non alcoholic fatty liver disease is a growing problem and you have to exclude it we do see children with intestinal seal obstructions and dysmotility problems as well who may have abdominal distensions and then you utter the four letter word and say it's fluid what do i do now you know and then you start to say is this due to the liver disease that's the first question to an answer really and then you know proceed along the uh, lines of investigation if you for answer that question positively then you have to think about is it primarily re re related to the liver mm -hmm. or is it secondary whether there is any other systemic problem which is there what is the type of ascites uh, you know what is the best therapeutic approach and will it work this there there are several theories about ascites uh, within 15 minutes difficult to cover but these are some of the theories which are there but the staging of ascites is i don't think is clinically relevant but is important sometimes from a management point of view and can help you but classically it has been always staged one which is detectable only after careful examination which means that you need to do an ultrasound to confirm it stage 2 is usually easily detectable but of relatively small volume and and you know when it stage 1 and stage 2 you can usually manage it with diuretics but stage 3 and stage 4 you may need to manage it with other modalities of treatment the causes of ascites are several they are related to the liver but they are also related to not forget the ca that causes of ascites can be secondary to other organs in the body such as heart infection you know viral hepatitis journal of pediatric gastroenterology 2002 gi infected bowel gut perforation biliary perforation which is very uncommon but can be seen in the neonatal age group and i'll come to talk about that later and some neoplasms as well as you know pancreatitis which can sometimes be easily forgotten in children and vp <laughs> shunt so taking a careful history and examining the child is quite easy and if it is chylus ascites you're in big trouble The next question you know as a child approaches is what is the age of the child because the causes of ascites will depend on what is the age of the child because the causes are different in different uh, uh, individuals and if it is a neonate you know there are the most likely causes it's a hydrops vitalis but 1 month to 2 years protein energy malnutrition is quite common in India and that's one of the reasons why children can have ascites end stage liver disease but congestive cardiac failure which can be easily forgotten secondary to chronic anemia sometimes and constrictive per pericarditis and i haven't seen congenital nephrosis or cephalus giving rise to ascites in the western world but i certainly have seen it uh, in the indian setting uh, when i was very young 2 years to 15 years uh, you know they are almost the same apart from congenital cephalus but i wanted to spend some time on talking about neonatal ascites because when you are presented with neonatal ascites is it is quite important to make the differentiation whether this is urinary ascites whether this is biliary ascites whether this is